Hello everyone, my name is Morgan Chadwick and I'm a senior undergraduate student at Cornell University. I am also a scholar in the Pride Scholars Program and I am excited to be outlining our Pride Youth Investigators Program for you today. This video is intended for 4-H staff and practitioners as an introduction to the Pride Youth Investigators Program that is currently being developed. For those of you who do not know, PRIDE stands for Program for Research on Youth Development and Engagement. PRIDE is a community-engaged translational research program that is housed in the Bronfenbrenner Center at Cornell University. Our goal is to work alongside New York State 4-H practitioners to develop and carry out evidence-based interventions and evaluations that promote positive youth development. PRIDE scholars spend their junior year learning about positive youth development translational research, and community partnerships in preparation of creating an intervention or evaluation tool for a New York State 4-H county as a senior year capstone project. This year, our cohort responded to the requests of several 4-H work team leaders to develop a curriculum to teach 4-H members about Youth Participatory Action Research, or YPAR. YPAR has gained a lot of traction in recent years as an exciting way to learn about young people's experiences and values and how those perspectives can help them find purpose and belonging in their communities. Instead of assuming what is important to youth, as is sometimes the case in adult-led research, YPAR equips youth to investigate themselves and their communities through the research process. Youth are no longer passive subjects but active researchers who can study and advocate whatever is important to them using their own voices. In empowering youth to investigate their own questions, YPAR lends an unaltered insight into young people's experiences rather than an interpretation based on our sometimes limited adult understandings. Its findings get rid of the need to suppose or project the thoughts of youth because those thoughts are directly articulated by ad adolescents themselves. By learning about the research process, youth also gain the ability to tell fact from fiction when they're reading about science in academic papers or online news. This is especially important today, as we live in a media-saturated society where shock value can sometimes outrank honest reporting. YPAR also shows youth that getting to know, getting involved with, and improving the communities in which they live and grow isn't just for grown-ups. They'll learn and be equipped to make changes too. Pride's overarching goal is to make New York State 4-H program a living laboratory. Essentially, this means working with county practitioners and community leaders in order to develop new programs and evaluate pre-existing ones to promote optimal youth development. As we just mentioned, the senior Pride Scholars develop their own capstone project every year. When so many practitioners reached out to us about the idea of involving youth in research, we knew we had to respond to this underdeveloped area. As senior Pride Scholars, we were excited by this concept because all of us are very passionate about research, but had no idea how to actually execute a research question before coming to college. Other programs have previously developed science curriculums for high schoolers, but we wanted to focus not only on teaching younger kids how to conduct research, but also to ask questions that are relevant to them and that engage their curiosity. We wanted to empower these youth to analyze their surroundings and ask questions. Our curriculum, Pride Youth Investigators, was created with the goal of equipping youth with the skills necessary to conduct research to improve their lives and communities and empower youth to be active participants in research. Our current curriculum consists of three modules that take youth through the beginning stages of conducting research. In module one, youth will gain a foundation for conducting social science research. By following the module's main character, Bobby, through narration and activities, youth will learn to critically analyze and interpret research findings from different media sources and learn the parts of a scientific research paper. Youth will also be introduced to positive youth development concepts that are emphasized th throughout the curriculum. 
perseverance despite fear of failure, maintenance of self-worth, and articulation of ideas through civil discourse. After this introduction to social science, youth will follow Module 2's main character, Susie, to learn about asking questions and generating a hypothesis. In this module, youth will learn what a hypothesis is, how to use observations to form hypotheses, and the purpose of hypothesis generation in the research process. This module pays special attention to fear of failure. In Module 3, youth will be introduced to Abigail to learn how to select research methods to evaluate questions and test hypotheses. Youth will be exposed to different study designs and methods. This module emphasizes the importance of maintaining self-worth and persevering in light of failures. As we have described, our Youth Investigators program includes components of Positive Youth Development, or PYD. Youth programs, including those at 4-H, entice adolescents with their activities and descriptions of things they'll learn in the program. As with most experiences, however, youth will usually get more out of a 4-H program than what is written in the description. As senior undergraduate students looking back on our youth experiences, we thought these unspoken youth concepts were some of the most influential and important components of our past experiences. In our curriculum, we wanted to purposefully emphasize these points rather than just hope that youth got more out of the curriculum than learning about research. The first PYD component we wanted to emphasize is fear of failure, or the thought that you will not meet your own expectations or those of others, thus restricting opportunities for growth. This fear can be characterized by a lack of effective coping mechanisms in the face of failure. In reality, failure is a learning opportunity that allows people to understand their strengths, weaknesses, likes, and dislikes. We want to remind youth that everyone fails at some point and nobody is there to judge them. So the most important thing is how they react to failure. Youth need healthy coping mechanisms in response to mistakes and failure that allow them to grow from what they have learned. Another PYD component is civil discourse or the engagement in conversation to enhance learning and comprehension of difficult or sensitive topics. Engagement in effective conversation requires active listening and talking to enhance learning and understanding. There is skill in learning to respect rather than just tolerate people who have differing opinions, ideas, and interests. We must learn from each other even if we don't see eye to eye. To do that, we must engage in active, productive discussions that do not attack others for having differing opinions. Furthermore, it is important that youth learn to defend and articulate their own ideas to share with others and describe their perspectives. We believe they can incorporate these ideas into their own lives through civil discourse. The last PYD component we emphasized is self-worth, or one's sense of value and assessment of one's assets. Youth need to know that they are of worth to themselves, their community, and those around them. Societal expectations should not direct their self-worth, although they too often do. Their expectations may not always match their self-worth, but that does not make them any less important, as everyone has value and brings different skills to the table. As we mentioned earlier, our curriculum has three modules so far. Module 1 relates to scientific thinking, writing, literacy, and sources. Module two touches upon how to turn questions relating to their interests into research hypotheses. Module three teaches youth about study designs and methods so they can find answers to their research questions. When going through the modules of this workbook, there are several moving parts that work together to create a cohesive learning experience for youth. At the start of each module, Instructors are provided instructions on how to navigate through the module. Each module also begins with a short summary to gain a quick introduction to the module. This summary is only present in the practitioner workbooks. Next, there is an overarching narrative for each module that introduces a character to which youth can relate. This character grapples with real life adolescent issues 
and then turns to the world of scientific research to try to address these issues. The narrative is used to introduce concepts, connect activities, and provide closure for a module. The narrative can be read solely by the instructor or by the youth for more engagement. Second, interspersed between portions of the narrative are several activities. These activities range in nature, but often rely upon teamwork to better understand the module's concepts. Some activities introduce new concepts, and others work on solidifying concepts that have been previously introduced in the narrative or other parts of the workbook. The instructor workbook provides more instructions for setting up and introducing these activities that are not included in the student workbook. If there is time, practitioners should skim the activities before starting to make sure they, they understand the execution and purpose of the activities. Third, there are discussion questions at the end of each activity to summarize the main learning objectives. Instructors have sample answers in their version of the workbook, while youth have space to take notes on the discussion in their workbooks. These discussion questions are an additional method to help facilitate our PYD component of civil discourse. Additionally, you'll find the instructor version has several discussion points and questions interspersed throughout the module that do not appear in the youth version of the workbook. These discussions and questions are present to reinforce material and engage youth through active participation. We recognize that there are individual needs and limitations for any group using the program and workbook. Instructors are able to choose which activities they would like to engage in, but we do recommend going through the full module if possible to reproduce the experience we have envisioned for youth. We hope that this video was informative and helpful and that you have gotten a clearer understanding of the Pride Youth Investigators program. We believe that this curriculum could inspire youth to enact change in their environments and answer the questions they've always had. We are excited to work with 4-H communities to see this project in action, and we hope that you will join us by using our program and helping us refine the curriculum as we continue to build it. A special thanks goes to this year's Senior Pride Scholars and staff for their hard work on creating this curriculum in response to the needs of your communities. If you have any questions on the Youth Investigators modules or program, Pride in general, how to access this material or anything else, please feel free to contact the Pride program via phone at 607-254-5125 or via email at pride at cornell.edu. Thank you for watching.